Hello everybody, and um, welcome to my talk, Leakaging, what ML platform to rule them all. First of all, I want to thank uh, Plain Concept for inviting me another year to this magnificent event. Um, also want to thank Microsoft for being sponsoring the event and being possible to be to do this uh, again. And also I wanted to thank all of you uh, to give money to World Central Kitchen. Uh, we know that we are in a difficult situation right now, so it is pretty awesome that you give that money to them so they can do good things with it. Before starting talking about ML and AI and everything, I want to ask you a question. Do you know where really we live? So, from a point of view, uh, we live mostly in urban uh, cities in which we develop all of our activity, going to leisure, going to work, being with friends, etc. And this tendency has changed in the past uh, century. But do you know how these cities are growing? I mean, how many people they really live in, in them? Because we can see that the tendency is that those cities are growing and they are not stopping. And we are going to have some problems because of that, right? Um, also, the work is not near to where we live, uh, almost in every place here, maybe in Madrid, where I lived. But, um, but how will these people go to around the city? How do they travel? So if we take uh, the study from the Coalition for Urban Transition, we can just distinguish three, three different types of uh, ways of transport. The first one is the non-motorized transport, which are walking or cycling uh, with no electric motor. Then we have the public transport that is made by taxis or by bus, by train, by those private transports that are put on the service to other people. And finally, we have private cars uh, or vans or anything that are related to one individual. So if we see, uh, we can see that in here, that the differences between also uh, different continents and also different cities, but more or less uh, the, the ones that have a real big uh, public transport network are the ones that have more people walking or biking or everything, and also less uh, traffic, or still say less private traffic in, inside the city. But if we go to dive to different cities around the world, we have uh, Sao Paulo, New York City, London and Shanghai, we can see that the mix uh, between all of them is very different. It is unexpected for me that in Shanghai, almost all the people uh, go walking or cycling to, to uh, around the, the the city, and also Shanghai is a very big city, so it makes difficult to think that they are all going in with no motor motorized uh, transport. <clears throat> but also we can see that in cities that have a really good public transport network, it almost more than a third, or in the case in New York, for only just going to work we have more than half uh, going to there. Um, finally, uh, cities like Sao Paulo, uh, we can see that maybe it balances the private car with the public transport and also with the walking. But something happened right this year and it's COVID-19 arrived and all these theories that we have around how people are moving around the city has changed because of the lockdown uh, we experimented in March <coughs> this year. Uh, almost all the people has been stayed in their homes. No, so how people are moving right now uh, has changed that mobility paradigm. And right now we are experimenting another, um, <coughs> not moving so much because of the second wave, um, mostly here in Europe. But as we can see, there was a uh, part in which these um, months around June to September, we have an increase of people moving around. 
and almost in all the movements we can see that they were done by car so something happened right covid changed uh, the, the game and from cabify we think that the journey uh, has changed and we have to adapt to that journey and we want don't we don't want to stop believing that we can do a thing for all the people around the city and propose a new way to move uh, in those cities and in a more safer way and in a more sustainable one and also being an alternative to the other uh, ways of transport. But before all of that, I wanted to present myself. I am Eduardo Matallanas. I'm a senior data scientist at Cabify. Um, you can just uh, see, see me around in Twitter or, in, or you can just ping me with an email if you're interested to know more about things about Cabify and other things that we are doing. And uh, I wanted just to introduce what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about a bit of Cabify and to see the vision that we have around mobility and what we can do with this data to enrich our journeys. We also wanted to talk about how data science is doing in Cabify. So you can just see that uh, even though we are, or you're thinking that we are an, an app for uh, make journey requests, we are more than that. And we work on, on that line to just uh, try to apply data science to change the, the environment. I'm going to talk about, uh, obviously, ML um, and AI. And finally, uh, I'm going to just give some uh, introduction to how data are used to uh, make some decisions in, in Cabify. So uh, the journey st starts here, and I hope you're not going to enjoy it and don't get boring. So Cabify, I don't know what you know about it, but uh, we are a great hailing app. Uh, maybe you know about us because we are competitors of Uber, Lyft, Didi. But others maybe knows us as the first Spanish unicorn. Um, we have presence in, uh, in 12 different regions. Uh, here you have where we are. And everything starts for something. And here I want just... Um, Kaifi starts always with a destination, right? We wanted to go to one point, in this case, from point one, from point A to point B. And when that happened, we just opened the app, right? And put the different places that we are going. And after that, our app looks for the best driver that meets your requirements, and you only have to hop on, and it's a match. So here is the magic. We just get you the best driver to your best driver, to your best ride, and then you only just need to enjoy it, this, this ride. So as you can see, we are not only a ride, we are just more than a journey. More of the, most of the people think of us maybe as a uh, an app for just looking for uh, going to point B to point to from point A to point B, but we are more than that. We are looking for your best experience and for your best journey and um, enjoy it. What the what things the the things that we are doing <clears throat> more most of them are related with making journeys safer and reliable. It is also an alternative to those private transportation which makes a transformation in the cities, so there are less congestion and you can just use <coughs> the mobility when you need it. Also, we are trying to be more sustainable and try to make cities not as polluted as they were, as you were using saving um, ways of transport. And finally, we are trying to always uh, embrace the change, trying to go for 
um, transforming these cities in something that can be a uh, health for all of us because there is no planet B. So we just are working to uh, do this thing happen. So maybe you know us because we are just an app and we are trying to just seek for you to go or to take you from point A to point B, but we are more than that. Uh, we are a tech company that we are looking for you to have the best journey and have a journey. And that journey you can decide how to do it because first of all we started with just maybe you know us because we have some fleets and some drivers that uh, takes you from one point to another. But also we can just uh, for taxis that are in the cities. So we are trying to get them more journeys so they can just uh, take people from the different places they need. Also, we have something for corporative um, <coughs> trips. Um, imagine that you wanted to go to a meeting and, and you wanted to just make it to that ride in some kind of uh, better or the best uh, car that you that you have. You don't have to rent it, we just provide that service for you. Also, we have a van service in which you can just go with another six or seven people to whatever you want. In some places like Mexico, we have Califly, that is just an helicopter service that takes you to the, to the airport. And lately we have Mobile, that is uh, our micro-mobility um, means of transport, scooters, bikes, and everything, that makes you the one that wanted to go for a more susta sustainable ride and go in a way that um, makes you the, the, the driver of the, of the transport. Uh, we have, as I said, uh, bikes and, and motorbikes and everything to just take you for, for that point. So as you can see, we think that mobility as a service is possible. Uh, we are doing it and um, this is generating a lot of journeys that we wanted to have stored in one place, right? Because from all these journeys, what we are trying to do is to stack all information and give you the best experience and have uh, and try to make you move from one point to another in the best way that we can. So here in Calify, who is the person that is in charge to transform that knowledge, uh, that raw knowledge into uh, interesting data or data that can be uh, used for another teams to pro provide you with the best experience? Are we the data science? So we just turn those data into knowledge by trying uh, different techniques, exploratory data analysis, and everything so we can just get you to the best service. Then always we have in our DNA and, and, and our culture that we have to make decisions based on data, uh, based on facts, not in evidence. Because uh, with those data we can just make improvements and have some uh, reasoning be behind them. And finally, we just test our hypothesis. We make a lot of experiments, A-B testing, switchbacks, um, difference in different experiments. So we can just um, turn those data and those maybe uh, things or trends that we just detected in the data to be real in the real world. And with the less impact till we just uh, see that it makes good for, for the for the journeys. Also, all these results are translated in what I said, better experience for users, uh, well-balanced marketplace in which we have drivers and riders that are the, the ones that I introduced before. And finally, with all this data, we are trying to improve the cities and make them more sustainable. But the data scientists don't stop here because we have to take that data to the squads or teams that we have inside Carify. And there's another figure that maybe you don't know, but we have in here and they are the research teams. They are the ones that talk with the different managers, engineering, product managers and squads to try to, uh, they have 
this uh, knowledge that we extract from the data and can do anything that they want from, from that. Also, with this figure, we wanted to close that gap between the, the real things that are done in the app and the different studies on theory that we were making inside our, our notebooks. So this figure is the one that is trying to make knowledge great again. But you were thinking that, why aren't you telling this? Okay, so let's just start. Which are the different stages of a data science project? The first one is the problem that I mentioned. We are just um, trying or have the suspicious that something happening. And we wanted to just first see how this uh, problem impact our experience or journeys or whatever we have uh, inside the app. Then we have another part, right, that after everything is dimensioned, we wanted to just try to get with a model or something or maybe a code or maybe rules that uh, are inside this model prototyping and this is the one and the key one that is going to extract those trends and maybe put in some code that other teams can uh, use it for have um, produce or have a better impact in their in, in their working days. After that, we just take that model to production, so it has to be consumed for the rest of the world because we don't want to just do studies and make theory. We want it to apply to the to the app and to the all different services that we provide. So we make them available to all the teams and just request those models. And finally, we iterate in the last part with experimentation. We are making sure that we are measuring the impact, we are going in the right way and the right direction, and we are trying to, after that, release those models into production, into the real uh, environment. But the, the work didn't end here because it's a cycle, right? It's a life cycle that we have for all the projects and we have to iterate. As all the design this know, is in our DNA to just not being uh, satisfied with what we have. We have to go bigger and try to just uh, iterate about it. So how we scale knowledge in Calify? So for scaling the knowledge, we need something that we have to make sure about it, that is the quality. Also, we need to guarantee the possibility of our experiments and all the people can just go to it. And also, we need to just make them accessible and searchable for everyone. So anyone in the company can just go to any experiment that we did or any exploration that we made from the data. And from there, go with that data to a new um, things or new ideas that they have to apply those models and those things. So we were looking for a tool uh, regarding all these needs that we have and we find Knowledge Rebel, which is um, a tool that Airbnb developed, I think it was two or three years ago. Um, it is a very cool place in that match all those uh, characteristics that we have and we needed to just and um, we have one of um, on our environment that for all these characteristics that i introduced the quality uh, we have those notebooks that we have and we create like a post in when in which all those results are uh, available for all people to consume and another process that we made is a review of those uh, codes and all the insights that we gather because we think that it is necessary to have more opinions about what we did and Knowledge Repo gave that tool for us. Another thing that it gives is the reproducibility so we can just have the data in one place and point to that place so anyone can download them. Also the different environments and libraries that we have so anyone can just reproduce what we have and also the code is available so anyone that wanted to explore a bit more can just download it and execute everything from their own. Also a good thing is that we have accessibility 
that is that you can just see different posts in a like web page and you can just navigate from them. And also a good thing is that they have like key points in all posts are uh, done, which is a very brief executive summary. So it's not only for scientific purposes, it's for anyone non-technical uh, point of view or not data science point of view can just understand what we did. And it is, it is a way for us that they can just understand what we want to transmit. So it is in our responsibility to make it uh, available for, for all people in the, in the company. And also uh, another part is just more related with science and it's a large scientific re report in which contains all the highlights and all the code that we were trying to get those results. From the discoverability part of view, we have the search bar in which you can just uh, go through key keywords and try to just extract the best post that fits your necessities. But also you can subscribe to different tags. So whenever a new post related with that tag is uh, in available in knowledge repo, it's going to notify you. So it is very easy to go and read what we did and consume it and see if in any team can be applied this new uh, way of seeing things. So with this knowledge repo, we can cover stage one and two for any project that we have in data science here in Calify, but it was not the, um, the solution for all our problems, right? Because we need to also be able to put something in production and anyone can just consume it and also experiment with them. So if we go to the ML lifecycle, we can see that we have experimentation, mode creation, training, monitoring those models, and the optimization, that is that iteration around the, the models. We can see that in, in the market, we don't have anything like that, or at least a, a year ago, or something like that. So we write what we need here in Califa. Uh, there was like the um, wish list that we have, some point, I think it was one year or one year and a half. We wanted to just train models and evaluate them in an easy way. So we don't have to just put the notebooks, try to uh, store all the data in different places. Um, we also wanted to just put the models in production alone with no engineering uh, supporting us so we can do it on our side. And with that, also we needed something to monitor our models because we were blind if we were not seeing what was happening with them and which were the inputs or the outputs. So something has been done in that last mile. And finally, we need to just insert the reproducibility of the model. So we need to just have different uh, stages or places where we can just look for, for that part. With that thing, we can analyze less experimentation and do more experiments, like trying to put as many models as we have and try to put them to make some experiments. And that's why we just go through Likeion and it was the ML platform built for our ad hoc necessities. And what is really Likeion? Well, Likeion is like a lot of small pieces put together. It is our solution for ML production, but we have like two parts. One related with features that are like the scientific data that we need, maybe uh, can be consumed directly from business or can be consumed directly from our models, uh, but it's rich information from what we have. And also we have models that um, learn from that data and put that information to all teams in, in there. Also, this location was based on Google Cloud Platform. We have BigQuery, Kubernetes, all Google Cloud Storage. Also, we have those marvelous thing that is MLflow and it's used for mobile serving. Um, and for the last part, um, monitoring, we have Prometheus and Grafana. We use them to see how our models are behaving. And we are refining this uh, monitoring part of the platform. So, what are features? In theory, they are like something that can be measured from the outside, something that is objective. 
But in practice, it's something that can be done with augmented data. And that allows for us, from the models and from everywhere, to take that uh, data and um, build any new metric or any new KPI or any new model uh, around it. So we uh, built this um, feature store because it was the piece that had more value in less time. Um, we have two different uh, purposes with this feature store, and it's that the features can be calculated by or can be used by models and by the business. And finally, we have two different ways to store the data that we have in Riches. One is with Query, that is our data warehouse, so directly models or any other thing can be consumed. And we have big tables, so the services can just access to those, to those tables and serve the information to any other team. So it is a consistent way to calculate features and they are, they are gathered together in one place. The other part of Ligation is the ML learning platform, which is made of model repository. It's basically MLflow server in which we are just using the capabilities to store the trainings, store the models, and to use the features during our trainings and store those usual models inside a model storage. Remember that right now MLflow has those model repositories, but at that time, I think it was one year and a half, we have to build it. So we created our model storage in which we have uh, all those versions and all the different things related to it, with what we do uh, for the training. After training, we have the and to just something to put in production, right? We need to just build a Docker or try to move that model or that version to Kubernetes. So we just make those that model management API. So we go there and try to get the last version of a model and put it into production. And finally, we have a model serving part in which we just, those Dockers that were built in with, the, with the storage models uh, are put in production and can be accessed for anyone. Also, we just granted the, um, the access with some case or whatever. So this is the whole picture and this is Likeo. So after that, I wanted to see, to show you how easy it is to put in production something. So you maybe are thinking about how easy it is to create a feature, right? So here's Likeo and here is me. Um, the only thing that I need is just a feature manifest that is more or less an, a query to SQL and try to gather information from our mm, warehouse that is in BigQuery. So for that purpose, I have uh, our CLI uh, leaks CTL that I'm going to use to just create the feature. So I'm going just to create a feature manifest that is in YAML with a um, query inside and after putting in some repository, this feature is created and activate those different parts of the feature store to create at one place the, the big query uh, table with the feature and from another place the big table so anyone can access to the feature store through an API and get those insights. So, okay. We have that feature store, but how about if we wanted to put a model in production? Well, easy again. First, we will start training it, creating a new version and everything. We create the model that we wanted inside the repository. So we are going just through LeakCTL to just create that version of the model. Then we are going to train it. So for training, we are going again to the model repository API and make training and evaluation of the model in the version that we have. And the resultant thing is going to be a store in the model storage. And then if we need to deploy, we just go to the model management API, select the model that we want and create the Docker for put it in production. And finally, what what we need just to infer this model. And how can we infer it? Through LeakCTL or through a REST API. And the only parts that are involved are just 
a, that API and the model to try to get anything that we need from, from it. So, as you can see, it's very easy. It's just a few commands in a terminal. So, if I did it, anyone can do it. So, don't worry, and it is not so difficult as it seems, because our engineers build a very good platform and that fits perfectly our needs. So, for the last mile, we have the monitoring, and we, if we don't observe what is happening with our models, we are blind, and we don't know if they are built or they are responding with the needs or the needs from the business or anyone. So, from that part, we use Grafana and Prometheus, and we just build some different dashboards in which we just get all that information and see how is the degradation of our model. And finally, as uh, this is something that is, it is building right now, we are trying to make those uh, retraining and revaluation of the model um, periodically and automatically, so we can just uh, be vigilante of the um, of, of the models and anything else. So, just to sum up and get all this information, uh, we just see what is Calify and. What we did is that we love journeys and we extract all the information from their journeys to make you the best experience of them all. Um, in here in Calify, we do not only theory, we just put something in production and we also just test everything uh, in a safer way so users, in our case, drivers or riders, uh, can uh, have the best experience. Then uh, we have different tools, the knowledge repo to sell information and to uh, start doing any project, and Lycaion to just refine those models that we have and put in production and so anyone can uh, access to those insights. Uh, also, a good thing is that we have feature source, so they are, as I said, the most valuable part that was built and which give a lot of insights and can be done uh, to with simple queries. And finally, I hope that you have the uh, and that you share with me that how easy it is put models in productions um, with the right tools. So, if anyone have any question, you can ping me or whenever. And finally. I wanted to just um, say thank you to everyone, uh, thank you to be in here, and uh, I wanted to just say that we from Calify don't stop uh, believing, and we wanted to uh, say anything. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed this talk and see you.